Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, on Roku Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, Floyd Mayweather, Saul Alvarez, the folks at Golden Boy are literally topping themselves. This September fight card right now is shaping up to be a blockbuster of epic proportions. Already, according to some published reports, this fight has already set the live gate record in North America. Right? Apparently they have sold so many seats that the gross should exceed any gross for any fight in North America with regard to the live gate. Well, now they're topping themselves. On the undercard, it's been announced that Danny Garcia, let me say unbeaten Danny Garcia, is going to fight Lucas Matisse. That's a blockbuster fight. Let me just tell you, online, I can get a gauge of just how much interest there is in a fighter by the number of comments to the videos in which I list that fighter's name. Now it might not be apparent to the general public, but Lucas Matisse right now is one of the favored fighters with the boxing hardcore, right? Many of you believe that this guy is an uncrowned champion. I was critical of him after his knockout victory over Lamont Peterson and there was blowback and it was significant, right? Lucas Matisse has a fan club. Many of you don't believe that he lost to Zab Judah or that he lost to Devin Alexander. Almost all of you put Lucas Matisse on your list of the hardest punchers pound for pound in boxing. Let me just say, the Danny Garcia-Lucas Matisse fight is a headliner fight on most cards, right? This is a blockbuster event. It's inclusion on the Mayweather versus Canelo card is simply astonishing. In my opinion, if there was any doubt on whether Mayweather versus Canelo would get at least 2 million pay-per-view viewers, I believe that doubt has been erased. Right? I believe that this fight is a major event. I believe that most people understand the fight's going to be explosive because both Garcia and Matisse pack a punch. Right? And of course, to have this fight as a precursor, as an appetizer to the main event, is definitely mouth-watering. Well, apparently that's not enough. The latest rumor is that unbeaten Eris Landy Lara is also going to be included on the card, and that he's going to fight Austin Trout. That gets a wow. Right now, I was actually planning on being in Vegas, not at the fight, but really more in sports books, soaking up the atmosphere. Right? I thought maybe I would go to one of these closed circuit type shops to watch the fight on closed circuit. Sometimes that's better than being at the fight because you actually get the camera angles and stuff like that. And of course, if they're serving drinks, sometimes you're able to get drinks and food much more quickly than you could at the actual fight, right? And of course, cost-wise, sometimes it's a little bit cheaper. But I will say then, you know, if they get Everslandy Lara and Austin Trout in the mix, then to me, that would raise the ante even more. Right? I'd have to seriously consider trying to bum a ticket to get inside the building. Right? Understand this card is a very high 
quality car, right? It, it really exceeds normal expectations in terms of the quality of the undercard and the quality of the main event. And understand that the main event features two guys who are both unbeaten, right? Let me backtrack a little bit and talk about some other boxing news. You know, I'm very concerned about a fight that I think has a good chance of an upset. And that's Alexander Povetkin's challenge of Vladimir Klitschko for the heavyweight title. Right now, I like continuity. I like the idea of looking at a fighter, let's say Juan Manuel Marquez, and knowing that he's been with his trainer, Nacho Beristain, for a very long time. So this way I know that those two guys know exactly what to expect from a training camp, right? I also know that when the bullets start flying on fight night, that one man, well, Marquez can go back to his corner and talk with someone who knows him, right? And can trust that advice because both of those guys have been together for a long time, right? There's familiarity. I don't have to worry about personality conflicts and a lack of awareness about, you know, the fighter and about the trainer and about how they go about things. Well, there have been a lot of rumors flying around that Alexander Povetkin is going to change trainers for this fight. I can't believe it. It's a head scratcher, right? Trainers like Freddie Roach have been mentioned. I don't like it. You know, the bottom line is simply this. Povetkin has a degree of uncertainty right now creeping into his preparation that quite frankly should concern gamblers. It gets worse, right? His promoter went in and actually won the bid for the fight. But now we're finding out that Alexander Povetkin has broken with this promoter, right? Vladimir Haryanov. Really? You've got to be kidding me. He's shaking up now the financial part of his team? I don't like it. Now, I understand people are going to say, well, he also has German-based promoters, Sauerland and others, right? Okay, fair enough. But the guy who put up the $23 million for this fight now is no longer part of Team Povetkin, right? If you're a gambler, you need to follow this story extensively, right? Because quite frankly, Povetkin has a real chance, in my opinion, at the upset, but he needs to show up with a level head, well prepared, right? If he shows up being pulled in a lot of directions, both with a new trainer in the ring and with a new management team out of the ring, who knows what's going to happen? I don't like the uncertainty there. Finally, middleweight champion Sergio Martinez gave an interview. It's online. It's brilliant. You need to read the interview, right? He was asked about the upcoming Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. fight versus Brian Vera. And uncharacteristically for most interviews, but not uncharacteristically for Sergio Martinez, who is a very straight shooter, right? The reigning champion actually gave a real opinion. He said that he fought Chavez Jr., right, and that Chavez Jr. was bigger than him. He said that he sparred with Brian Vera in preparation for a fight, and that Brian Vera was smaller than him. Martinez doesn't believe Brian Vera has a chance in the fight. Now, let me just say the view from the cheap seats outside the ring, in fact, outside the arena in a sports book nearby, in other words, my view, is a bit different, right? I believe that uh, Chavez Jr., no matter how big he is, has been out of the ring for a year, has ring rust, and is actually going to be dealing with a motivated opponent here in Brian Vera. 
right? The bet I've recommended there is Chavez Jr. by KO hedged with Vera, the underdog, to win the fight. Just understand that someone who would know, someone who's been in the ring with both, doesn't think Brian Vera has a chance. Also in that Sergio Martinez interview was Martinez's declaration that he's not going to fight past 40. Now keep in mind, this is boxing. We've heard declarations like this a lot of times. I remember when David Hay said he wasn't going to fight past 32. I remember when Bernard Hopkins said he wasn't going to fight past 40. Right? Um, in boxing, promises seem to be made to be broken. But keep in mind, Sergio Martinez has put together such a legacy, and he's such a straight shooter, that I don't question him. Now, Martinez in the interview says that he wants to have one tune-up fight, then he wants to hop in the water against Gennady Golovkin. And understand, Golovkin, like Lucas Matisse, has a huge, unnoticed group of fans out there. Apparently, the HBO special, Two Days with Gennady Golovkin, astounded the network. It got so many views. In fact, it got more than 2 million views. I believe the boxing hardcore are much smarter than the general public believes. Right? I believe they know the special fighters. I believe Gennady Golovkin is viewed as a special fighter. Just understand that Sergio Martinez is already in his late 30s. There are two guys he wants to fight. One's Gennady Golovkin, the other is Floyd Mayweather. Right? You can expect big things to happen in the next 18 months. Right? What I'm hoping is that both Golovkin and Mayweather take seriously the self imposed deadline that Martinez has placed on his career. Because Martinez promised his mother that he would not fight past 40 and he may not be bluffing. Right, so food for thought. Finally, let me just say this. Sergio Martinez was asked who wins. Saul Alvarez versus Floyd Mayweather. In Martinez's mind, the choice is clear. It's Floyd Mayweather. Well, you need to understand that it's not just him. Right, Nacho Beristain believes that Floyd Mayweather will simply be too much for Saul Alvarez. Let's dig deeper. Manny Pacquiao's trainer, Freddie Roach, believes that Floyd Mayweather will be too much for Saul Alvarez. I believe that these hardcore insiders view the fight as more lopsided than does the general public. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online about any fight that I've mentioned. Whether it's Danny Garcia against Lucas Matisse, whether it's the rumored Eris Landy Lara versus Austin Trout fight, whether it's the main event, Floyd Mayweather against Saul Alvarez, whether it's the heavyweight title fight, Vladimir Klitschko against Alexander Povetkin, or whether it's the fights that Sergio Martinez wants. Martinez against Golovkin, by the way, in responses to prior videos, the sentiment is overwhelmingly on Golovkin's side on that fight, which is interesting to me. And finally, of course, Sergio Martinez against Floyd Mayweather. Let me also say this too. The Martinez interview is very troubling in one regard. Martinez, who presumably would know his body better than anyone else, says that he might require further surgery. Understand, too, that it's July of 2013. And Martinez, who is a warrior, right, who had a track record, quite frankly, of taking big challenge after big challenge, has said, that he won't fight again until perhaps March of next year. That tells me 
that his injuries were serious, right? One of the injuries is a knee injury. By the way, he accuses Martin Murray of dirty fighting. He actually says in the interview that Murray repeatedly used his leg to knock into Martinez's knee, right? Mar Martinez is very strident and saying that he's never going to give Martin Murray a rematch, right? I haven't looked at the video since reading the interview. I'm curious to see exactly what kind of leg maneuvers Martin Murray was using. Anyway, let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.